Okay, so now let's treat back projection with a little bit more of mathematical formalism. And to motivate that, uh, let's take theta in Sn minus one, X in Rn. And uh, let's see for, uh, for the back projection, uh, we found out which line in direction theta perp X was actually on. And you find that the line defined by uh, all of those z for which we have that z times theta is the same as x times theta is a line that obviously goes through x, but it's perpendicular to theta. So it is the line that we've been looking for. So the contribution of uh, the line in direction theta comes from the data at theta and x times theta. Okay, uh, now assume that RF of theta and S is measured for all theta and S, uh, we, we always call the data G. Then uh, the back projection is, uh, well, the sum of uh, the contributions of all directions. But uh, if we have all the directions, then we replace the sum by the integral. So it makes sense to define the back projection of some data function g at the point x as the integral sn minus 1 g of theta and x times theta d theta. And if you discretize that, then you get back the discrete version that uh, we had motivated before. OK, that r star g, therefore, is called back projection. And uh, the main thing behind this is that uh, R star, that notation really makes sense because the back projection is the L2 adjoint of the radon transform. Now let's quickly prove that and uh, let's take an image function F in L2 of Rn and uh, a data function G in L2 of C. Remember C was that cylinder Sn minus one times R. So um, to look at the, um, to get the adjoint, we need to look at something like the scalar product and of R, F, and G in L2 of C. So that's integral Sn minus one, integral over R, R, F of theta and S, G of theta and S, D, S, D theta, because uh, C is Sn minus one times R. So that's the standard scalar product that you will use. OK, uh, so uh, now we plug in the definition of the radon transform. So we have over, we, we have this one, and uh, we put all the dx to the end. And then you see that here we have the integral over r. Integral x times theta is s uh, dx ds. So we are uh, integrating along par all parallel planes. That adds up to an integral over rn. And uh, by Fubini, that's really the same. So we have an integral Sn minus one, integral R, Rn f of x. Now S is x times theta. So I plug this in over here, dx d theta. I change the order of integration. And we have an integral over Rn f of x, integral Sn minus one g of theta and x times theta d theta. And you already see this is nothing but the back projection of g uh, evaluated at x and dx. So this is the integral over f of x r star g of x dx, which is the, um, the L2 scalar product of f and r star g. So uh, r star satisfies the equation that we expect from adjoint r f, uh, scalar product of r f and g is the scalar product of f and r adjoint g. So uh, in fact, the r star as we defined it is the adjoint. OK, um, now when we have this, um, this mathematical definition, uh, let me go back for a second to the row filtered layer gram that I introduced. And um, I said that applying uh, the filter back projection to the radon data was like a convolution with one over x and one over the norm of x. And uh, let me prove this now for the continuous version. So R star RF, that is the adjoint applied to the radon transform. So this, this would be the measured data. So that would be the, uh, uh, the uh, back projection of the measured data. That's something that's in image space so that we can evaluate that at some X in image space. 
Now, from the definition of our adjoint, we have that uh, this is uh, the integral over S1, our F of theta and X times theta D theta. Again, plugging in the definition of the radon transform over here, we have an integral over S1. Y times theta is the same as X times theta, F of Y dy D theta. We let y to uh, act, we, let, we write y as x plus y, so we get an f of x plus y over here, and then y times theta equals zero over here. And uh, now you see this is nothing in, in two dimensions, uh, and also in higher dimensions, this is nothing but polar coordinates, right? So we're integrating over all um, over all directions and uh, then we are integrating over the whole line. So we're writing everything, this is like writing everything in polar coordinates. With one exception, uh, in polar coordinates, you only have uh, positive values of the radius. Here we have positive and negative ones. So uh, when writing as an integral over R2, we get this integral twice because we have it for negative and uh, positive values of the radius here. And uh, now this is an integral over R2, f of x plus y, and the integration constant for polar coordinates in two dimensions is one over the norm of y, dy. So uh, again, this is nothing but twice the convolution of one of the norm of x times f, and that's what we already had. And uh, now plugging in the convolution theorem, uh, as before, you again arrive at the same reconstruction algorithm as before. Okay, so all of this is also valid and now even a little bit more mathematical uh, as for the discrete version. Okay, so uh, that's nice. And um, later we will need one more theorem and uh, I think it's appropriate to prove this at this point. You saw that a row filtered la layergram is a convolution in image space. Um, this is something one doesn't like to do for several reasons. Uh, one would rather like to perform the convolution in data space. And I claim that uh, this is possible. And um, so let H uh, a data function. So that's some function on that uh, cylinder C. And let F um, um, uh, an function from image space and take them from S just to uh, to assure that uh, all the integrals that show up actually converge. Okay, now then the back projection of H is an image and it makes sense to convolve this image with the original function F. So that's a convolution in image space we have over here. On the other hand, uh, let's take that function H and uh, let's uh, convolve it with uh, the data function RF. So that's the measured data. So this is now a convolution in data space. And I must always say what we have two variables here. So what does that mean? It's always with respect to the second variable. So if I forget to, uh, to tell you then convolution, differentiation and so on in S of C are all, always with respect to the second variable. So now this is a data function when you do the convolution and it makes sense to plug it in to back project that and what you get is an image. So you have an image on the left on the, and on the right and I claim that this is the same. Okay, so what does this say? It says that uh, we, that convolution in image space can be performed as a convolution in data space. So uh, if the outcome of the row filtered layergram is that we should convolve uh, in image space, then we can actually also perform that uh, convolution in data space, which might be more feasible Okay, um, let's prove that. So we take the right-hand side term over here. That's the, um, the, the um, back projection applied to the convolution of H and RF. By definition, this is nothing but integral SN minus one integral over H convolved with RF of theta and X times theta D theta. 
Now plugging in the definition of the full of the uh, convolution with respect to the second argument, I get integral over Sn minus one, integral over R, H of theta and X times theta minus S, RF of S dS, d theta. And uh, now plugging in the definition of the radon transform, I get another integral over here. This is still h of theta uh, and uh, x times theta minus s. Now f of y dy ds d theta. Okay, uh, so um, doing the same thing as before, this is uh, just uh, integrating along all hyperplanes in direction theta perp. So uh, due to Fubini, this is an integral over Rn. We have an integral over Sn minus one here. And uh, the rest, um, uh, this is an h of theta x, um, x times theta minus s. s is the same as y times theta. So I plug this in and I get an x minus y times theta. This one does not depend on theta. So I can take this d theta over here f of y dy. And again, let me tell you that um, since we took everything in S, uh, interchanging the, uh, the um, variables, interchanging the order of integration, everything is absolutely okay because all the integrals exist and uh, I'm just not talking about this here. Okay, um, so if that is true, then, uh, but now we see that this is nothing but uh, the, back, project, uh, the um, back projection of the data function h at evaluated at the point x minus y. So this is um, r star h applied to x minus y. And uh, okay, so, but then we see that the whole thing is just the convolution of f and I, r star h evaluated at some point x. And uh, uh, um, several times I think I've used uh, the commutate that uh, the convolution is commutative, uh, that uh, f star g is the same as g star f. Okay, so uh, now we have everything in place and I will prove the final reconstruction theorem for today.